The following is a Joel Mahalik production. <clears throat> Let me explain something to you. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. And it will then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Joel Mahalik Show here on the Joel Mahalik Radio Network. Oh, sound, hi. Didn't that sound good? <laughs> yeah, it sounded awesome. I'm Joel Mahalik, and I'm being joined by the, the, uh, the lovely, lovely Sharon. Sharon. The, T-H-A-A, the. The. As in the only one. Right. Oh, wait. Or the, thy. Or Thy. Well, yeah, but thy doesn't work. Thine. Thine. Th- th- awesome. Thou. Are we practicing? Thou art are we practicing, awesome. Are we practicing to be to play um, Mike Tyson for Halloween? <laughs> no. Why? Why would you say that? Because he uses a lot of ths in his vocabulary. That's because he has lips. That's right. So stop it. <laughs> Just pay attention to the rest of the show. Oh my goodness! Listen. Yes. I want to wait a minute. Something you want to do on the show? Yes. Can I finish the business end of it? No. Okay. So uh, you're listening to us on JM Talk. No. <laughs> JM Talk dot net. Uh, subscribe to the podcast there on your favorite player. Also, the twenty four seven stream is there. Should you not be able to get enough of the program? And also, we are on Facebook at JM Talk and on Twitter at JM Talk Radio. We're also on Instagram, but I barely ever go there. Yeah. And I couldn't tell you what it is. Probably my name. I, I have no idea. I, you know, I, I just never found You're that like out. You're like me with Twitter. No, I'm not like you with Twitter. I don't have 16 Instagrams. Oh. <laughs> to your 16 Twitters. But anyway... Hey, can I do what I wanted to do? So, what, all right, so go ahead. So you wanted to do what? Because we do have a lot. Don't forget, by the way, that today's, or this week's, I should say, because this is not a daily show. This week's episode of the Joel Mahalik Show is brought to you by the word fail. And we'll get to that fail. later on. Can we spell that, please? Uh, F-A-I-L. I-L. Fail. All in caps. Right. With a ton of exclamation points. So we will come back to that. But what did you have? What did you want to uh, talk about there? I wanted to give a shout out to my new friends. Oh, you met one of your super fans today. I did. Yes. She's awesome. Okay. And her name is... Super fan. Super fan. Athena. Athena. The fans that reach out to us, no, I, always, yeah. I, always, I always, I put the adjective "super fan" in front of them. Well, yeah, but <clears throat> Athena is a super fan. Get it? She's a super <laughs> fan. No, she really is. And I met her today, and met a couple other people today. And listen, you met people today. I You're met acting like you people. just got out of the house, like you've been on house arrest. Shh. <laughs> they weren't supposed to know that. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. No, but yeah, shout out to Athena and Sharon and Deb. Yeah, that's the guy. Uh, yeah. And May, you met me today. Oh, yeah, but. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. But I know you and I love you. And I love you too. I had a very aggravating day today, as you know. I do know this. And then I came home and I was aggravated again. And then, of course, we didn't eat till late. And that aggravated me. And now he's bitchy. But that's okay because I have a solution for that. Oh, my goodness. I I have a Snickers bar. (gasps) Yeah. Yay! It's a Snickers mini because I'm diabetic. But it's a Snickers bar that I am going to eat in front of everybody's imagination. And he is truly eating a Snickers bar, Mm. people. Oh, my. Look. 
That is so rude. <laughs> <laughs> that is so annoying. <laughs> oh, look, I, look, I'm back to me. Yay, there you are, Joel. Okay. okay. So, we have, thank God, too, stuff to talk about tonight. <gasps> Yay, I love it when we have stuff to talk about. Do we want to talk about fail now? No. Yeah. Yeah? Nah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Nah. Too late. <laughs> so the reason we mentioned the word fail. Epic. Epic fail. Is if you've listened to the show for a while, it's no stranger that we're constantly talking about because we're fed up with the way people drive. Absolutely. So a couple of weeks ago here in Delaware, there was a massive rush hour tractor trailer accident on Interstate 95 right. in Wilmington. <clears throat> and as the story came out, and we started getting more information because a couple of people died in this accident. Tragically. As it came out, there was one part of the news story that I read that blew my mind. Because I, I always wonder when you have an accident this big, and we talked about this before, it's hard to get follow-up news. It's I don't know right. if it gets lost or just not properly yeah. reported on. Right. So we were, you know, we were wondering how does an accident like that happen? Because the first thing I think of, and maybe it's wrong to do so, I always think cell phones, texting, probably have something to do with some of these accidents. And I may be right. I believe you might be. But we wonder. When these tragic accidents happen, so what was the key factor? So a couple days after the accident, the news story came out, and it, it was the the Delaware State Police does an, a very good job, by the way. A shout out to them as well. They do a very Absolutely. good job of reconstructing accidents. Right. And then their uh, public relations team does a really super job in relaying that information to the media so we can get it. Right. And this accident happened because during rush hour, or just prior to rush hour, well, I mean, rush hour starts on I-95, like around 2.30, 3 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. Traffic was slowing because it is rush hour, it is Wilmington, so traffic was slowing. And the tractor trailer that was involved, okay, and here's the line that really pisses me off. The driver failed to slow with the slow in traffic and therefore hit several cars, rear-ended several cars. Yeah. Sending them this way and that way. and Because he failed. Because he failed to stop or slow down. To slow. A tractor trailer. You're driving an 18-wheeler. Right. And your base job is to be in control of your vehicle, like any of us are supposed to be. But you 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 would think that they would have heightened awareness of what's going on around them because of the size of their vehicle. You would think. You one would think. One yes, would think. Yes. However, this driver failed to do that. But that's the pattern. The pattern is always somebody failed to do something. Now, whether that driver was on his cell phone or texting, we don't know because that right. didn't come out. Right. But the important part is a tractor-trailer driver who is, by CDL standards, to be in control of his vehicle at all times. Correct. Did not slow with the slow in traffic. Correct. This is exactly what you're afraid of when we're driving on the highways. Um, you're not worried it, about me. You no, always say I, you're worried about how the person behind this is going to react to the way I have to react. Correct. Uh, Joel, always, forever, thinks that I am criticizing his driving. It's not his driving I'm afraid of. It's the people behind us. I'm a good driver. Well, well that remains to be seen, but... Wow. Um, yeah, it's not you, it's them back there. Right. Do they have the... Are they in full control oh, of their vehicles? Right, awareness that, hey, traffic in front of me has abruptly stopped. Right. So, am I going to react accordingly? You know. Now... That's what scares the ever-loving 
piss out of me. Share, if you will, the experience you had last week on the road. Uh, Mascara? Oh, my goodness. Mm. All right. Uh, wowzers. It was at you want 10 of 8. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was at 10 of 8 in the morning. We were at an intersection. The person in front of me, I'm telling you, I tried to get a picture of what she was doing. She was putting mascara on in the rearview mirror, okay? Okay, we were all stopped. You know, it's her doing that in the car to begin with is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Do your shit before you leave. Right. Okay? And if you don't have enough time before you leave, don't do it until you get to where you're going. But no. This person, I don't know if it was a man or woman, putting mascara on. <laughs> Look, I don't judge. Not, you're not allowed to ask anymore. I know. And so she or he, I'm pretty sure it was a she, was putting mascara on in her rearview mirror. And then the light turned green. Did she stop putting mascara on in the rearview mirror as she was driving? I'm going to say You ask. No. <laughs> The answer to that is no. Wow. Did not stop. I tried so hard to take a picture of it. But you had to drive too, so you had to be in full control of your vehicle so you can't take that picture. Well, you I was to. trying to take it while we were stopped. So once we started moving, obviously I put my phone down. Yeah. Because well, I'm not re- irresponsible and taking pictures and texting and doing you know all kind besides i'm listening to my book i didn't want that to interfere with listening to my book <laughs> i'm just so, saying so there's a psa hit in here there's, and so like if you're listening right. if you're listening to the show you should i mean tell all your friends about the show because there's psas hit in here sometimes we actually some things we make light of but there's always a, there's always a a point right the point here is absolutely people have to pay more attention and they don't and i don't know how else to get the message out except to scream bloody help get this show out because then people will hear our message and maybe they tell someone maybe they say you know what yeah i do know somebody that drives like a moron exactly you know, you know what? i need to tell them about i themselves. wish i wish wholeheartedly that i was a cop or had the powers that a cop has in pulling someone over and slapping them upside their head saying you're a moron. Police brutality? No, but then (laughs) I wouldn't be a cop, so it wouldn't be police brutality. I always have that same notion. I'll be sitting at a light or something with some moron next to me, and I'm like, it would be Drew's great. I'm just here in my black truck, and then we take off in a light, and I'm like, click, click, woo! You know what I mean? Like, I could be an undercover cop. right? And be like, step out of the car, son. I don't even want to be a cop. I just want to have the cop's power, you know? Right. Like, maybe a citizen's arrest. But you don't hear about them anymore. No, no. Because the court system does not recognize that as a valid arrest. Just saying. All right. So, PSA, please... As we we pretty much end all these conversations about bad drivers in the same way, please yeah. pay attention. Exactly. You know, I, I, put your damn mascara down. Yeah, I mean, it, is it that? It, I, this is the this is the and thing that I always can I point just out. Say she wasn't even pretty. <laughs> I always point this out. Why? <laughs> what is so important that you have to do these things instead of paying attention to where you're going so you can you're get there safely? You're driving a two-ton vehicle. Right, a two-ton bomb. Exactly. So, I mean, I'm just saying. So, please, don't do it. Okay. So, uh, moving on. Uh, since since this segment has turned moving out, up. since this segment turned <laughs> out to be fairly top. serious, because you know that driving thing serious. Then let's stay on another serious topic that really pisses me off. Now, our vacation place, uh, campsite, whatever, is in Southern Delaware. Correct. And a couple of weeks ago, a um, is a Ace a Yellow Lab. Yeah. I want to make sure I get this yes. right. So a Yellow Lab uh, turned up missing uh, right from the area where it was our, a family dog. Yeah, family yeah. dog, beautiful well dog. Loved. Name is Ace, um, and he's been missing uh, since. Uh, I'm trying to see here. 
Uh, I knew I wasn't going to have the right information. <laughs> For, uh, September 22nd. Okay. Uh, Labrador, I'm That's sorry. That's a long time. Labrador Retriever. Okay. Yes. Okay. So they had they started a Facebook page. They started a campaign. Uh, two weeks ago, they had a big meetup where a bunch of volunteers came together with their cars, and they started yeah. patrolling all the neighborhoods and talking right. to people. Right. Uh, uh, we were stopped when we were playing cornhole. Victor and I, we were stopped, okay. and we talked to them about that a little bit. And... Uh, got some information, and the reward, which was twenty five hundred, is now six thousand dollars. This family really wants their dog back. That's all they want is they want their family dog I back. No, no questions. They just want their family dog back. Right. So they've been canvassing the area. They've been having these groups get together and do this. Uh, we shared the post at least on my personal Facebook, trying to yep. move it around. Yeah. Because now the search area, I don't know if you know this, Sharon, has moved to New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. Oh my goodness! No, they, they I didn't. They apparently have new evidence to believe that the dog was taken. So no. Here's the thing. So uh, when you're down in that area, in the whole area, all you see are these yellow signs, bright yeah. yellow signs with, with the information, the, the phone number, the two pictures of the dog, right. how to the reward. Yes, and they're all over the place. Well, the Delaware Department of Transportation, Del Dot, right, um, has threatened to fine. The Ocean View family, if they don't remove the flyers uh, regarding their missing dog, that's been placed on various utility poles and signs throughout the area. Are you kidding me? Can you be any more heartless? Because or an ass. Why? Yeah, I wh- said it. What's wrong with these signs being up for this family dog, yet when an election is over... I have to spend the better part of a year after the election staring right. at These dozens of political signs, political signs right. all over every corner. Oh my goodness! You know, uh, so let's. I mean, let's just play fair a little bit. Let's just play fair. Right. I've never seen one story where Del Dot has ordered or threatened to find politicians for their signs being all over the place. After, because you have a certain amount of time after an election to get these signs out, right, out of view, right, and that never, ever happens. No, so and I'd be willing to bet that they never get fined. Right, I'm sure they don't. So after hundreds got involved in the search, helping post flyers and search for Ace, the family is now being told by officials. To remove the countless flyers that are posted across Ocean View or face a $25 fine for every single poster. Oh, my God. That's heartless. It, it is heartless. It's heartless. It's heart-wrenching. And, uh, you know. Look, we are massive dog lovers, you and I. Yeah. And would never dream of losing one of our beloved pets but if we did we'd post pictures of this animal from our house to california if that's what we thought would work right so uh let's we have a i have a small clip of course we don't have we'll see the phone call worked out so we'll see i'm going to try to pipe in this this is a state okay. a statement from uh rob Petch. i'm sorry uh with rob petri from wgmd uh, uh nicole pudadazi explains let's see if we can get this sounding good let's see if we can get this sounding good i don't think it's hurting anything at all i think everybody else would agree but she just said they're not allowed not allowed on the utility poles or stop signs or yield signs or Anything like that. Very upset about it, but I also don't want to pay $25 a dime. Poor puppy has cost us enough. This just comes at a terrible time, huh? Yeah, and everybody, you know, wants to help, and the flyers are the biggest way to get it out there. So, I, I agree. I don't think it's hurting anybody, and um, and I say boo-hoo, poo-hoo. Poopy poopy to Delaware Department of Transportation. Exactly. You know? Um, you, because you don't pay enough fees to Del Dot. Yeah, you know, with your various vehicles and boats and trailers right. and whatever you have, right? That you have to pay, you know, uh, their dock fees, fees. Yeah, dock fees and stuff. Air quotes, dock fees. Yeah, you, know, you have to pester a family saddened by the tragedy of a missing dog for putting missing posters up. Would they do the same thing if it was a child? I wonder. Anyway, that's uh, a that's an interesting question. It is. I'll pose that question and this story on the Facebook page at there JM Talk this week, 
and you can openly discuss. Let's get discuss. some responses, yeah. people. So, okay, we're going to cut out of here, take a break. We'll be back with more of the Joel Mahalik Show and some more lighthearted, funny stuff Yay. coming up after this. This is New York Super Oldie Station, 920 WON, The Apple, Brooklyn, New York. So I use my computer every day. I'm not even sure how I get along without it. But I wasn't prepared for a virus. A Trojan, they called it. One night I'm cruising along, and the next night I can't do anything. I was afraid it was going to cost me a fortune. Boy, was I surprised. They had me back up and run the same day I called them. I really like PC Tech Rescue. And you know what? My wallet likes them too. Are you troubled by computer problems? PC Tech Rescue should be your very next call. Whether the problem is viruses, hardware, software, or any other issue, they can diagnose your problem and have you back up and running fast. With more than 25 years of industry experience, you can be sure you are getting dependable and affordable service. Call today, 484-429-6061, or email us at pctechrescue at gmail.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Joel Mahalik Show featuring the lovely and amazing Sharon. So we're back, and I wanted to dive into... Obviously, last week was the Super Bowl, and the Kansas City Chiefs won. Andy Reid got his ring, and, you know, so... Finally. Congratulations to the Chiefs and to Andy Reid for getting his ring, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but one of the things I wanted to point out about, uh, related to the Super Bowl, is... Um, actually about one of the players. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they win something big like the Super Bowl and they're going to go to Disney World and they're going to do this, they're going to do all these yeah, things. Yeah. How, exactly. However, um, the defensive lineman for the Kansas City Chiefs, Derek Noddy, had something else in mind. After the Chiefs beat the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 54 on Sunday, Noddy paid for the adoption fees for every dog... Um, for every dog, Kansas City Pet Project um, at an animal shelter in Kansas City. Um, so every dog that is available for adoption at the shelter, or was, hopefully they all found a home, would all be able to go home with no adoption fees due from anybody who wanted to adopt all the dogs in the shelter at that time. That is so awesome. It is awesome. And then as we did some research into this, we found out that um, he is a regular supporter of... Uh, animal shelters and um and that's a good thing to be a supporter of right um so during the season he had sponsored the adoption fee of one dog after each chiefs win i think the chiefs won 12 and 4 in the season so that means besides that so during the season he paid for the adoption fees for 12 dogs from, wow. the, from the shelter and then when they won the super bowl he paid for the adoption fees for all the all the dogs uh, in, in that the shelter. shelter, yeah. So that is so awesome. It is awesome. My he, my only question is this: <clears throat> Were there any Saint Bernards in there? No idea. And why didn't I get one? I have no idea. Um, I'm so, just saying. So, if uh, anyone out there knows of a Saint Bernard puppy, like little baby puppy, I want one. And back to the show. Back to the show. <laughs> so, no, that, that is, it's a great thing that um, he partners up with that. Uh, you, you don't hear enough of the good things about what a lot of the football players do. A lot of the football players team up with some sort of charity, and they're yeah. always buried yeah. in other news, and you never really get to see what's going on. Right. Um, but and the, that's a shame because if they're helping a charity, um, it should be. It should be recognized. Recognized, right? And you know, things like this might be in their local paper, but it doesn't get enough. It's like our uh, honor thy heroes, right? You know, it's like these types of people don't get the recognition because they're. Um, he it, should be one of the honor thy heroes. Hmm. Should be, but <laughs> we have so many that not everybody can be. And honor thy hero. But, he, but we still, we're still still talking about we're him on the show, so he still, him, gets, yes, yeah, he still yes. gets his honoration. Yes. Just yes. doesn't come with the bragging rights, but he can brag all he wants after doing that. Right. 
as far as I'm concerned. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, I just wanted to uh, point that out. That is uh, that is amazing of him to have, <clears throat> to have done that. Yes, it is. Um, also, you know... You're familiar with you're familiar with Chernobyl, right? I want this. Yes. Is, this is really interesting because you know Chernobyl, uh, which is where the nuclear reactor um, had the meltdown, right? Back in eighty five, eighty four, eighty five. Basically, that ruins the city, right? And you know, it's going to be years before anyone could live there. But here's the. Th- Here's the thing. They found a black fungus. Okay? Okay. This black fungus back in 1991 was found growing up the walls of the reactor. And okay? what does that mean? Well, let me get to that. And the thing is, scientists were really um, sort of like about this because you, got, you have this fungus as a life form and it's growing yeah. where th- stuff's just not supposed to grow. Exactly. Um, so they found out that this fungus, this black fungus, was impervious to the radiation in the area. Not only that, it was attracted to the radiation. What? Yes. Is the black fungus his nickname Godzilla? No, but, Godzilla. That, but that's good. That's good. Um, <laughs> so, here's what's, so here's what's going on with this. This, this fungus is absorbing the radiation, eating it, and converting it into a chemical energy for growth. What? Yes. If that, if that doesn't tell you that Earth is amazing. It is. And science is amazing, then then you know, then here you go. You know, in the it, black it, fungus is eating up the radiation yes. and growing from it. In a paper, uh Written, it was noted that the fun, that the fungi. I'm a fungi too, by the way. You are a fungi. <laughs> attracted to radiation are unlikely to be the first examples of their kind. It says here in a paper, large quantities of highly melanized fungal spores have been found in early uh, Cretaceous period deposits when many species of animals and plants died out. This this period coincides with Earth's crossing the magnetic zero, resulting in the loss of its shield against cosmic radiation, therefore allowing it to thrive. Uh, and uh, Molly, we hear you. We're coming. Yes, I know, Molly. <laughs> she's she's trying, over here crying at me. She's trying to rush us through the show. Right. Um, but this is interesting, right? I mean, Very. it makes me wonder if science, if scientists can do anything with this type of uh, fungus. Because, listen, a lot of medications come from stuff like this. Right, have penicillin. Right, is a fungus. It's a fun what? guy. It was. <laughs> it started out as a fungus. Right. I don't think it's a fungus anymore. So it's not a fun guy now. He's not a fun guy. <laughs> but but he's a cool guy because he he's a out, cool guy. He's out killing infections. Yes, he is. Um, but notice we the penicillin. If I'm not mistaken, from my history was um invented by a woman but Could we're be. calling it a him what call him what a him a the penicillin? penicillin oh <laughs> okay. <laughs> well okay so it, it, okay. so it was a fun gal that's what you're saying i gotta look it up now dang it because you bothered yourself with that but I so am. this makes me wonder if like they if they could take something like this and i'm not saying well i mean maybe use it in every day but what if they could take something like this and use it for when there are issues in nuclear power plants? I don't know, you know, because usually, I mean, you know, we live just a few miles. I mean, right across the river from the Salem County nuclear power plant. So, you know, we're in that zone where if something happens, they're going to pass out blue pills so we can kill ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why not? Did we find something here in Chernobyl that allows us to pass out black pills? That says you're taking you're like come get me radiation I'm radiation man <laughs> <laughs> yes no maybe oh my God. I don't, <laughs> no I don't know <laughs> no that your your superhero is radiation man <laughs> oh my God 
You're not. Wow. Okay. So penicillin was not invented by a woman. It was invented by a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was a fun guy. Right. Alexander Fleming invented. Fleming man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. Op- opportunity <laughs> continues to present itself. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. You know, I have to say, I have so much fun on this show. Do you? I really do. I do. And I look forward to it every single week. I'm glad to hear that. I really do. And I'm not just blowing smoke up your skirt. <laughs> How did you know I was wearing a skirt? <laughs> You're sitting across the table from me. And besides, it's, it's a, mine. It's a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> no, not with purple flowers on it. Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, speaking of skirts, can I have my teddy bear back? Your teddy bear or your teddy? My teddy. <laughs> you ruined it. You said teddy bear. Oh, <laughs> dang it. But still, it has the same effect. I want my teddy back. Uh, okay, so I'm interested I, I'm interested to see what, what could happen with this black fungus. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And does it mean that Chernobyl can be habitated earlier than they thought? I don't know. They only found it on the reactor walls. Yeah. Well, that's where the most intense radiation was, you know, obviously. Right. And actually, um, quick question. Did we finish the miniseries Chernobyl? Because I have a feeling we missed the last episode. We missed the last last episode plus season two. There's a season two? Yes. I thought it was a limited miniseries, one season, five episodes. I'm... Pretty sure there's a season two. Why don't you look that up? <laughs> I will. Um, so meanwhile, she'll look that up. <clears throat> but uh, interesting story about the black fungus. So in the uh, in Detroit, or in the Detroit area, or a story coming out of Detroit, I don't know which is more accurate, but Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard noticed something unusual Thursday <clears throat> about what he thought was a police car that turned out to be a copycat. No? No. No season two? No. Okay, so we we need to finish watching that. We're re watch it all, like binge all five so we get yeah. reconnected. Um he activated his emergency lights, pulled the vehicle over. His initial response was, Who are you? Bouchard said. And I said, I'm the sheriff. Who are you? Bouchard says he originally thought the car was a Bloomfield Township police SUV, but when he noticed some irregularities and immediately became suspicious. Um, the driver's door was also sported the decal saying emergency response, which was sort of odd. So he ran the vehicle's plates and uh, it came back to an individual in a home. And it was his clue that he clearly was not a police, it was not a police car. But that it certainly looked looked like one. Um, so the driver of this vehicle they pulled over was also in possession of a loaded handgun and a knife. Did not hold a concealed pistol permit. Um, and speak. I'm speaking. <laughs> and no one even knows yet to this point. The guy's in jail now for impersonating. No one knows what his motives are. Wow. Why would you go out and impersonate a police officer? Because of, you of can. all things, of all things. Yeah, I mean, I know. I, I know you, you're not. I, I say because you can, but you can't. I mean, I know there's the old saying that uh, be anything you want, but geez. <laughs> <laughs> not a police officer if you're not one. Right. And this is not the first time, uh, you know, on this show that we encounter stories like this of people being pulled over by police, people being pulled over. Um, who aren't police and end up pulling police over. <laughs> right. Which is what happened here. Yeah, that's uh, too funny. Um, so now... He's, funny as in, ha-ha, not, you know, it's it's what he gets. Right. So he's sitting in jail pending charges because they're, they're, they're still trying to figure him out. Well. Which is, is interesting. I mean, they, I mean, they must have a really good impersonator on their hands if... 
you know, they're holding them pending charges because they got to figure out what to charge him with. They can only hold him for so long. That's right. Oh, you watch too much police dramas. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so, um, well, well, that's all I got. Over to you. Okay, so <laughs> Chernobyl is a miniseries. <laughs> How many episodes does it have? Uh, it doesn't say. It just Although it does, IMDb says Chernobyl, Zone of Exclusion, Season 2. But mm. it's not. Chernobyl is in 2019 historical drama television miniseries. Right. Produced by HBO. Um, and that's the whole even thing. Even though it won a lot or got a lot of nods. Oh, I'm sure. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's going any further. And the thing is, um, and th- th- that's the key right there, miniseries. Yeah. You know, that signifies that it's only a limited run. Right. But I'm thinking there's five. I'm thinking there we watched five. four. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, did one of us say sorry? Yeah. And it's plugged in, so it thinks we said Siri. Ha <laughs> ha, Siri. Wow. We didn't say Siri. We said sorry. Yeah, no Siri. Watch, watch what happens. Oh, she shut off. She got <laughs> me. She said, the hell with you all. I said, nah ha. Nah ha. We'll have to binge watch it. Yeah. I, I honestly forget what was in the last episode. And I, I want to see it from the beginning, And too. I forget why we stopped watching it. We got life happened. Yeah, life does happen. So, yep. um, okay, so what else is going on? You're getting ready to get out of here? I am. You have things I to am. do? Yep. And I have things to do? I do. I have our dog to her to take care of. Yeah. Since you wouldn't feed her this morning. <laughs> no. She's Correction, starving. Correction, she would not eat from you. No, I sit she's down, starving because you refuse I sit down and her. I hand feed her. <laughs> I hand feed her. I know, you and I both do. Yeah. And everybody looks at us like we're bone crazy. Yeah, like every all these people that you brought here were like staring at me yesterday because I was on the floor fun of you. feeding her. They were laughing at you. Well, you know, they you were gotta, all laughing at you. You got to do what you got to do for your precious baby. Yep. You know? Yep. So try that method when you feed her. I'm not getting on the floor. Why? I hand feed like I take it off the spoon. Yeah, I just with do the my spoon. hand. I know you do. And I hand feed her, like a boo eyed pretty girl. No, I I, I got to eat off the spoon. So no. thank you very much, though. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll head over to do that <laughs> <laughs> while you take over. Yes. The last so portion. of So when the I come show. back for the final stretch, the last part, uh, we have a wombat of the week. That we need to do, and also we have we will honor a new hero, mm-hmm. and um, they'll get the bragging rights for a week of being that. Yes. And if time permits, one last thing, and I hope time permits. And wow, she really needs you. So say, say, yeah. say, say good night, Sharon. Say good night, Sharon. All right, Sharon's leaving, and uh, I'm here to remind you guys uh, that I'll be back after these quick messages. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And come back for the end, will you? Be right back after this. America, your children have an amazing superpower. That's right. They can help save lives by simply washing their hands. Just 20 seconds of thorough hand washing after they've coughed or sneezed or been outside can help fight against the dastardly spread of germs. Armed with only soap and water and hands, your superhero can protect you, your family, and everyone out there in America land. Amazing. Find out more at coronavirus.gov. A message from the CDC and the Ad Council. Listen on the web, your phone, or your neighbor's internet connection. That wasn't very nice. This is Reality One. Welcome back to the show, everybody. It is the Joel Mahalik Show featuring the lovely Sharon. And welcome to the third stretch of the show. Uh, The final leap, the third stretch, part three, whatever you want to call it. That's what it is. 
and I'm glad that you're here. So, uh, several things going on for this segment of the show, as always. Uh, Wombat of the Week, Honor Thy Heroes, if time permits, one last thing. And uh, if you're new to the show, and you might be, because as I said earlier, we had a couple subscribers hit today, which is cool. Please, if you like the show, tell your friends about it. If you don't like something about the show, feel free to send us a message and tell us about it. Um, That's the way we are around here. So, um, if you're new to the show, as I was saying, uh, I'll explain these segments because some of them involve you. And I'll explain them as we go along here in the third segment. Uh, So typically we start with Wombat of the Week, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, So if you're new to the show, you can get involved in Wombat of the Week, and this is do that. First of all, it's our segment of crowning a Wombat, which is stupid people doing stupid things and it winding up in the news. In other words, if you wanted to, you could send us a news story. It has to be a verifiable news story uh, and a reliable news source, um, not a parody site. Um, of stupid people doing stupid things. You can send it to us either at joelmaholicradio at gmail.com or across the social media. Like you can go to Facebook at JM Talk and send us a message there and uh, and send us that story because we'll put it on the air. We celebrate these idiots, right? And that's how you get involved, and that's what it is. And so this week we want to talk about a man from Houston who was charged with using COVID-19 relief funds to buy a Lamborghini. And this happened one week after a Florida man was charged for the same crime. So, uh, according to the U.S. Department of Justice, this past Tuesday said that Houston resident Lee Price III is in custody on allegations of using fraudulently obtained COVID-19 relief funding for personal purchases. Prosecutors said that Price netted more than $1.6 million via two fraudulent loan applications. Department of Justice said one application listed a CEO who, in reality, had died a month before the application was submitted. Price used the money to buy a Lamborghini uh, Urus SUV and a, a, a 2020 Ford F-350 pickup, a Rolex watch, real estate, and for visits to Houston nightclubs and strip clubs. Wow. Um, as the pandemic continues to rage across states like Texas, um, this is what this Houston man does. $1.6 million. Uh, according to records, he submitted the fraudulent PPP applications on behalf of two businesses. The complaint said... Price Enterprises Holdings and, and 713 Construction. The applications claim that both companies had significant payroll expenses and numerous employees. However, prosecutors said neither Price Enterprise Holdings nor 713 Construction pay wages or have employees that match up with what the claim had, uh, what the applications had said. This is really bothersome because think about this. The uh, the PPP loans, and I'm a small business owner, and I was told by several people that as a sole proprietor LLC, I should have applied for a PPP loan, which I did not. I, When I was told that I could, I chose not to because I'm a sole proprietor. Um... I would think it would be fair to say that uh, I didn't take much of a hit during the pandemic. Still haven't. I think I think I'm still pretty steady. Um, I was looking over to the peanut gallery, who's giving me no motion. I think I was pretty steady. Took on two extra customers, so I wouldn't have I wouldn't wouldn't have seen a reason to do it. So, and maybe that maybe my fault is that I have a, a good conscience. I don't know. But here's a guy. Here's a guy who puts in two fake applications claiming to have employees with two companies, the no employees, so he can reap out $1.6 million in relief that could have, could have, could have, what am I, drunk? Could have and should have gone to businesses that legitimately needed 
the help. I mean, this guy is the lowest of the low. Um, he's being charged with wire fraud, bank fraud, making false statements to a financial institu- institution, and engaging in unlawful monetary transactions. Now, if you're asking why uh, false statements to a financial institution, the way the PPP works is buy to uh, one of the approved banks. They give you the loan as long as you meet the qualifications, and the government was is paying the loans back. So it's not like the government was giving you money. They were, uh, if you approve it alone, that was guaranteed that the government would uh, give the bank the money that they were giving you. So he defrauded. He defrauded the American people. He defrauded the American businessmen and businesswoman, hard at work. One point six million dollars could have gone to. One point six million dollars could have gone to a lot of businesses my size or a tad larger. I'm a sole proprietor, but what if it was a two or three employee type of small business that folded because uh, because the money ran out before their application got approved, and yet he's driving around in a Lamborghini. I would go so far as to say you sir are a piece of shit, and now I got to mark the show as explicit thanks to that. But that's how much he made me angry. Uh, so Lee Price the third, you are the wombat of the week. Mahalik show featuring the lovely Sharon, and I hope you get everything you're getting coming to you for doing that. Such a hyenas crime, <laughs> to use a movie quote. Okay, so that is the Wombat of the Week, and now we're going to move into Honor Thy Heroes. Very popular segment, same way you can send me hero stories. Exceptional people doing exceptional things. Extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. Everyday people doing extraordinary things. And these are the stories we can never, ever get enough of. I was lucky enough to stumble upon one this week out of our old local newspaper from Cape May County, New Jersey. <clears throat> so it was actually a letter to the editor that I, I ripped out. I, I, I made a comment. I did let the paper know that it would be featured on the podcast in a comment. And then I, I uh, printed it out and brought it here. But you can, Radio at gmail.com. You can send us your stories of everyday people doing extraordinary things to that address or again go to facebook at jm talk and send us a message just drop us the link you as you can see from 10 minutes of perusing the online version of that newspaper i was able to find somebody that is well deserving of the title for honor thy heroes now there's very limited information with this because the the parent of the child who was our hero this week, wrote this letter to the editor. So obviously there's no last names. There's no where did she work, you know. So just so you know, usually I do have more information, but um, I did not reach out to the family. I did not press. I think this is plenty. It comes out of Cape May County, New Jersey. And I'm going to read you the letter to the editor. I think that, that would be the most appropriate way. To the editor, Hannah was on her lunch break at work July 20th. When a woman started banging on the break room door, screaming that her friend was overdosing and needed Narcan. And again, I don't know where Hannah works. Hannah jumped up to see what was going on and saw the woman was struggling. So Hannah went to the front of the store, alerted the manager of what was going on, and to call 911. When Hannah got back to the woman, she was poor, not breathing. Hannah told her supervisor that she knew CPR, and they told her to go ahead and do what she could. Hannah CPR chest compressions and did so for six minutes until the first responders arrived and took over. Hannah then asked a co-worker to clear the aisle so the emergency medical technicians could get through and proceeded to the front entrance and waited for them so she could show them where to find the woman. The first responder told Hannah that had she not been there, this woman would not have survived. Hannah is my daughter and she is a very kind-hearted, loving, and giving young lady. Hannah has struggled with some self-esteem issues and has, at times, been on the receiving end of a bully. Her management team recognized Hannah's heroic action, but with all the negativity going on in our nation these days, I thought this was a positive thing for people to hear about. 
Absolutely it is. Absolutely. This is the kind of stuff that we need to hear more about because we are only being catered bad news and and bad things being shoved down our throat all the time. So this story, this, this is what Honor Thy Heroes is all about. Finding these things in local newspapers, that is what this segment is really about. And I know back way back when we started it, it was all about first responders, and I still love first responders, and they will always be heroes to us. And they still sometimes make the make the grade to be featured, you know, in this week or that week. That hasn't changed. We just decide to reach out and find all the heroes that we can. But Hannah is Hannah would be the poster child for this segment, I think. You know? Um and we we think she is amazing. What an amazing person. 16 years old to take on the responsibility she did to save a woman's life. And if that's not a hero, then there are no such things as heroes. And because of these efforts, Hannah, you are the recipient of Honor Thy Heroes. You're our hero this week on the show. And well deserved. And uh, this woman is... I'm sure, and her friend are very thankful. And, you know, your neighbors and your friends, people that know you, should feel better about life knowing that you're there. And so, uh, very good job on your part. Uh, We thank you for being a hero. We thank you for her. We usually thank you for your service to the community, and that's, I think, still appropriate. uh, Because you did do a service for somebody in your community. So, you are the hero of the week. So, um, folks get those stories in just send them in to us you know if you have one of those once a week newspapers they're the best place to find these things so if you stumble upon something send us the link send it joelmaholicradio at gmail.com we would love to feature all the extraordinary people and we do this every week so okay That brings me to a little bit of time left and one last thing. And one last thing, if you're new to the show, is just before we get out of here, just something on my plate I want to talk about. And today, I want to talk about uh, something out of TechCrunch. Now, I'm a big tech guy because that's what I do for a living, right? And I'm a very cautious tech guy. And everybody who knows me knows that. Well, as you know, we have started, which I think is wrong, autonomous vehicles, self-driving vehicles. And, you know, I used to be way over on one side of the fence, but I'm a little closer to the fence with this because I realize the more that we talk about on this show... The poor drivers out there on the road. I have no choice then to say to myself, well, I guess it's a good thing for self-driving cars since we can't count on humans to drive the way they're supposed to. So I'm starting to get it. And if you know me or if you've heard me talk about autonomous driving on this show before, you know that I have inched closer to the fence line. So I'm becoming okay with it. But my initial concern was if if you have a millennial or at this point of the game, anybody because apparently nobody from any age group at all knows how to drive. So if you have somebody that doesn't know how to drive or doesn't drive properly or whatever... And they get, they get into an autonomous self-driving car. They put in the coordinates. I want to go here. And it starts driving. If something happens to this vehicle and all of a sudden it's not autonomous anymore, will the person know what to do to take manual control and drive the car? This is even more important when we get to the point, and apparently we're not only are we getting to this point, but we are running for the end zone where we're 
going to be we're going to have drivers who never went to a driver education class getting into these autonomous cars and my concern was always well they don't know how to drive well according to te- an article on TechCrunch, um and this is my new worry more so than the other is the security they've already proven several times and here's another story about a security Benz. So let's talk about security. This should and probably will, since we're going to open up a whole new sector of jobs in security. Because more so than your computer or your bank account or anything, security professionals go into this auto industry on autonomous driving are going to have to be a game. Like Windows once a month, Microsoft once a month puts out updates for security holes and patches and things like that in Windows. We're talking about you're going to be patching all day, every day. As soon as a flaw is found or a, or something is exploited, you have to. You have to. The lives of people. So, like, I'm okay with the fact that, okay, you know what? You're a shitty driver. You might as well have an autonomous car. Okay? I get that now. But now are the people on the other end who have remote control to make sure everything's all right, are they going to be fast enough to keep the malicious people out? Because people with malicious intent, it is still a multi-billion dollar a year business. And so, like anything else driven by computers and electronics, the autonomous driving segment of the industrial world is going to be riddled with issues. And I think and at the point where we end up going full bore into this, we need to have a really good understanding and a really good security team watching out for us in these autonomous cars. We still have to make sure that people get some sort of training so if something does fail, if somebody does take over, you should be able to get manual control because there's nothing like the old-fashioned manual. You know what I mean? There should be a way for you to take control, flip off the autonomous, and take manual control. So I think there is going. this is a two-fold thing that I'm thinking of. You need to make sure people will get, get into an autonomous car, know how to drive a car. And the second thing is, is you have to have a top-notch security team working on this all day every day it's going to be one of the most important steps in this generation and that is of utmost importance when it comes to these autonomous cars and that is one last thing i want to thank everybody for listening to the podcast remember We reside on the web at www.jmtalk.net. So stop by, subscribe to the podcast. New episodes drop on Sunday afternoons, so you'll never miss an episode. Also visit us at TikTok and Facebook at JM Talk. Instagram and Twitter is JM Talk Radio. So I want to thank everybody for listening. The lovely Sharon and I want you to be good to one another. Hold a door for somebody, smile and wave at somebody. And we'll be back next time with you right here. Goodbye, everybody.